Okay, um, I work as the tribal linguist for the Wyandotte of Oklahoma. Um, it's kind of at a distance because I live up in southern Ontario and the people are down in Oklahoma. So um, what I, the program involves being down there twice, twice a year, once to teach the kids and once to teach the adults. Um, the kids are the really exciting part for me. I, just, I mean, I like teaching the adults too, of course the kids are really cool. And they pick up stuff really fast sometimes. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, so um, I send out uh, words. Um, every month I send out a, a certain uh, list of, of words. I do an MP3 recording, and then I send it down to my contact person uh, in the cultural committee. Um, I respond to uh, when anybody in the community wants words for something. Part of it's names. Names are very important. Traditionally, names were clan, but sometimes people, they want, they want a name in the language because it brings about a kind of connection, a kind of identity to have like a real name, right? So sometimes people will ask me, um, I want a name for my son or my, my grandfather. Um, and then I say, okay, tell me what, what he or she is like. And they'll describe the person. And I say, okay, I'll come back to you with the name. Um, the name is given in a sacred ceremony, very much like the traditional ceremonies on the, the day when the, the powwow is in September, the green corn. Uh, and it's, it's a magic ceremony. It's magic because the people, you know, the, the chief um, begins with a prayer and, 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 and gives the person the name and you can just see it, the look in their faces. It just, just feels so tremendous for all concerned. And that's becoming more and more a bigger part of the language uh, program. It's just they've got this word and they know this word. That's, that's important. The names are important because they had their names taken away from them. Right? That's one of the things that was stolen from them. So it's a, give, it's a small level giving back. Um, I'm also working uh, on the text. The, the language hasn't had speakers. Well, it's hard to say when, but let's say for about 100 years. Um, the language was recorded. Um, 40 stories were recorded um, by Marius Barbo in 1911, 1912. Most of the stories came from Katherine Johnson, who was uh, uh, a dear clan uh, member. And uh, a lot of the interpretation of what she said came from her son, Alan. Um, now, it was recorded, but it, the work was never finished. Yes, it was published in 1960 by the museum, but it was, it was a mess. That's probably the best word I could say. It was a mess, and it couldn't be used to teach people because there were too many mistakes, too little analysis. So my big part right now is providing that text. I mean, right now that interpretation of the text is up to 535 pages typewritten, so hopefully it'll be a little smaller as a book. But they need that basic source. You know, the, the, this, is, this is our language here, right? And this is where m much of the knowledge comes from. So that's a big part of, uh, of what I'm doing. Um, there are tribal, they have a tribal court. This is not unusual in, in the States and particularly not unusual in Oklahoma. Uh, there are 38 different uh, nations there uh, and m many of whom have tribal courts. So they, I've started to be involved in, in, in names for things, you know, defendant, prosecutor, judge, even court itself um, is, you know, how you develop that, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and um, as I say, and, and people ask me questions. I get, you know, because I'm a distance away, yeah, they I'll get an email. I want to know what you know how you would say this. So, and I'm I'm trying to when I'm down there, I uh, I put uh, on things that uh, like a a, a vat of coffee, right? 
So I didn't have a word for coffee. So I used a strategy that related languages did and made up one. And every time I see a thing with coffee in it, I put the name on it or put it on it. So they, they, they get same thing for sweet tea because they're Southerners. So sweet tea is very important. <laughs> but just little things like that. Kids, when I'm down there, kids will ask for questions about what's a word for this? What would be a word for this? And some of it, you know, to me, it's important that they own words of the language. The more words a person has in the language, the more they connect with their past, with the ancestors, with the elders. Um, even if, like, one kid once asked me, what would be a word for dinosaur? Because you know how kids love dinosaurs. So I, I made up a term for him and gave it to him. I said, okay, and here's what it means. And here's how you would know. Because he could then play with the language. He could see how, how the language builds words. Because it's very different from English and French and Spanish. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's part of it, you know. Um, so um, it's... It's, I'd say it's growing. I've only been working for th three years. I've had people prior to me working on it. My long-term idea is to get a couple of the younger people and for them to be, like, they've never had a tribe. They've had tribal linguists. They've had two before me, but they've never had a tribal linguist that belongs to the tribe. I believe that should happen. And I want to train a couple of young people. So that's, that's their life, right? That's the most important thing for them. And the last time the kids were down, there was this one kid, and he was so good. He had a gift with language, and I wanted, you know, like he would anticipate the next thing I was going to teach. And I love that. I said, okay, and then I pointed to him, what do you think? You know, so I want, you know, there'd be a couple of kids that would become fluent in the language. I want everyone in the, in the tribe uh, to have some of the language. You know, I mean, beyond, you know, Kwe, which is Solo, which it shares with other languages, and um, Ijatsi, which is I'm called for my name because I would introduce myself as John Ijatsi. You know, John, I am called. Um, more than a few things, um, thank you. Thank you, which is Tijamin. Um, yeah, one of the problems I have is Wendat has a lot of nasal vowels, which is easy for me to say because I've been exposed to French all my life. In the South, in Oklahoma, there is no French. <laughs> so one of the hardest things for the people is to be able to say nasal vowels. That's a real challenge. Um, and I just... Keep you know, I, you know, I say, okay, now grab your nose and say, oh, but it's it's a challenge. Like every every language teaching situation has its own challenges. One is just pure pronunciation. There's no, like, this has to be perfect trans, you know, uh, pronunciation. It has to be like this. But I keep leaning into that. Like in Tijamin, when they say Tijamin, I say Tijamin. And there are enough English words I'm discovering that use the French nasal vowel. So I give them, you know, like the home is in, like in honk, you know, in honk, we kind of, you know, we have, but it's, you, you have to look at, like each form of, of language teaching, each situation is unique. Um, you can't come in with a, okay, this is what we're going to do without listening to the people, finding out what they want. There's a couple people I work on stuff, I send it to them, and I say, how, how can this be improved? And one of them said, you got to dumb this down some. <laughs> and so I, I, instead of just, like, I write using um, the phonetic, the usual phonetic writing, that was confusing for a lot of people, so I approximated it in English. And I started doing that with everything. And you learn. I mean, I wouldn't have known that. It's, it's the feedback that's important, and I want to... Broaden my network of feedback, you know, get to people. And because they, they're really quick to do that. When I ask questions, they say, what do you, what do you want to learn about that? Or what do you need? What do you, what do you like about this? What do you don't like about this? And they'll come to me, you know, if you talk, you know. And sometimes it's just 
I'm sitting around where the, the gathering is, and people will come up to me individually and say, I want to know this. And just being there. It's not the directed learning, you know, the big school model. But it's important because people feel comfortable enough with me to say, John, I want to, I want to learn this. I want to know this. How would you say this? And, you know, even, even saying small things like, okay, you can say, um, um, thank you, Tijama, but there's no word for your welcome. That's a, you know, that's it. That's a European thing. You know, they have to thank you to death, right? <laughs> Same thing with please. There's no word that means please. Because if you say, the way I put it is this way. If you ask respectfully, please is a sign of respect, but so is asking respectfully in your tone and your manner. You don't need it. It's unnecessary. Uh, and, and part of what I, I teach is this is, these are things the language does, and these are things the language doesn't do because people didn't feel it was necessary. Like one of my patent ones, this is no word for best. Because that's a, a European cultural thing. you got to find the best. Oh, what's the best? Or favorite. You know, I mean, you know, what's your favorite subject? Or what's your favorite dessert? Uh, one that's free? You know, <laughs> but, you know, it's saying it doesn't have this. Um, there's no real word for command either or obey, which tells you, you know, just saying that doesn't give you words in the language, but it gives you the sort of way of speaking and the, the language situations that would be natural for the, for the people in the culture. So you, you do that, you know, you can't teach language without including culture. I, I don't think it's possible. You can't sell it, set it up as some kind of separate entity because it isn't. It's the two are interwoven so closely. You, you know, you can't teach language without people learning about um, uh, the culture as well. And that's good because then they, they come to understand. You see people nodding and you say, okay, I understand this now. It wasn't what I expected. Because they come with expectations of language because, you know, they because they know uh, English, some of them know Spanish, and they have expectations based on that. And, and the Wyandotte doesn't meet those expectations. It has other expectations, things that you have to think about. What I'd like to, to add to this, and there's be a new person soon that I'll be working with, is more electronic means, uh, more digital means to, to do things. So I can produce uh, digital lessons and people, you know, get more of a back and forth because, I mean, I have developed lessons, but those are ones that I use when I'm with the people. And and I think because, it, you know, it's tr primary tradition is spoken and there should be spoken lessons uh, sent back and forth. And there's lots of good means, you know. Like I say, I've recorded lots and lots of words on my MP3 player, right? And that's where... Um, Really good. But I think, you know, if we could, if I could put together stuff and have it spoken and then written for those who, who want stuff written too, that if you use the two, you can't just use the written. I mean, that's, that shouldn't be done. It, it should have so they get the flow of the language and the, you know, the stresses and, and get used to, to saying things, get used to saying big words. That's one of the challenges, of course, pretty much with any indigenous language is the words are bigger. There are fewer words in a sentence. One word can be a sentence. So, you know, that, that's part of the set of expectations. Once they get used to it, once they um, get over the, that word is so big, I'm scared. And I've heard that so often, the word is so big, I'm scared. If, you know, you, you, you make it so, okay, here's the flow. Just let it flow like this. Listen to it over and over again. And you'll get the flow, and then I think it's scarier when you see a long word than if someone speaks it slowly. I think when someone speaks it slowly and you feel the rhythm, like a sentence that, that a, a word can be, then people will connect.
that people will, because I know there's that that intimidation. I see it and I hear it. I look at people's faces because I watch people when I teach. You know, I was a, a college teacher for 30 years. I've learned to watch people when you teach to see where they are, to mm -hmm. see where they're confused. So I pick, okay, I got to do something about that. I did that. You know, you have to say, okay, you have to self-correct. You have to say, okay, this is this. Um, this is problematic for these people. Well, we've got to do something different. You know, something that, that you know, their comfort with the language is a priority. I, I gradually, I've only been at this for three years now, <laughs> gradually, uh, you know, you hear some of the words being used. And I, I love that. Even if it's just like the greeting, the names, and a few other things. I've also, one of the mo most magical things that I've ever done uh, was... Uh, an elder um, had a short time to live, and he wanted to hear the Lord's Prayer in Wyandotte. So I had translated it before, so I spoke it and, and sent it to him, and before he died, he heard the Lord's Prayer in his language. That was one of those times, you know. Magic, just magic. But... When they get more, you it's, it's just part of that, you know, it's, it's a, I think we're both experimenting, the people are, uh, I am, it's going to take a while, it's not something that you can just say, okay, we get to here, we get to here, like, like a grade system, um, and I find that each year, um, what I'm doing is more effective, and then I thought, oh, I can't believe I thought that, kind of thing. And, and it, it, it's neat, you know, I mean, uh, and, I, and I think when, you know, we'll see when I'm working with a new person, uh, I'm hoping it's a young person who's really good with technology, because I'm not. Uh, so we can, you know, I can speak into a microphone, though. And, and just so people regularly get access to hearing the language, hearing the language, hearing the language, playing it over and over again, saying it. That kind of thing. Um, I think because it's it's just and the and the people see uh, the tribe is in the in the reservation. There are a couple hundred people, but as citizens of the tribe, there's six thousand. So they're all over the U.S. and they come to the times I go down are the times they come down. So we're talking about a tri uh, tribal entity that's all over the U.S. There's like people from California, Oregon, uh, Alabama, you know, all over. So obviously electronic means have to be used more. I mean, other than just my, my speaking those words and sending them out, I've got to develop a concrete program that works that way. And, and you know, I'll learn and they'll, they'll teach me. Uh, and we'll get, we'll, I'll find out what works because I'm looking for what works. And, you know, as I say, it doesn't, when I first got, you know, when I retired for, as a teacher and then I said, John, do you want to be the, the tribal linguist? I mean, one of my eyes went really big, but I thought, okay, I got to do a lot of different thinking and I've got to not follow, a tr you know, I've taken classes in French and Spanish and Latin. It's got to be really different from doing that, you know, so, and, and it is, and I feel it's becoming. I, when you, people say, what's one word that would describe what's happening? I would say becoming. It's not there yet. It's becoming, and that to me is good. Okay, what is indigenous education? I would call it... Um, Gaining access to the ways of the people. Gaining access to the traditions, to how the ancestors were, the ancestors' knowledge, the ancestors' ways. Um, connecting with those things so that you feel your identity and how you live. Right? It's different from, say, learning something and getting marks. You know, it's not that. It's it's all about connection. It's all about connection. I'm 
that. Again, it's the, the single word thing, connection. When you have something beautiful and it's stolen from you and you know how it was stolen, if you know the history, having it brought back to you is a way of kind of greeting the ancestors. It's a way of of taking back what's been stolen and things are very precious once they've been stolen and, and they come back to you. Um, I just, you know, it is just, it does so much and, and, and it's hard, I mean I can, my mind is picturing examples of people and, and uh, you know like I said before when people get their names right and then they have a name that belongs to them and belongs to their people and links them to the people like that. It's a small thing. It looks like a small thing, but it's not. All you have to do is see what's on people's faces to know it's not small. For the language program among the Wyandotte, I hope 10 years from now, there's a group of, of young people who have lear been learning for years and who will take it up, who will, you know, who will be the ones to follow when, when uh, you know, I'm too old to teach or when I think, you know, it's time for you guys to take over. Because it has to be, it has to be from the people themselves, right? Mm -hmm. So part one of, of that is young people with the language, uh, people who will teach it, right? Um, and then uh, another part is everybody having some vocabulary. It would be unrealistic to say everybody's going to be fluent. That, that, that's beating your head against a wall. But that everybody has a good collection of words and that those words connect them with the language, but also that they help them understand, understand the culture. Everybody's got to have a pack of words, right? But we're going to have young people who at some point in their lives are going to be language elders. That is my, the first part of my uh, vision is, is that I, I, spoke those words when the Royal Commission was happening in the 1990s. I said for these people, this is, this is, this is necessary, right? You know, um, that kind of thing that you, you work with uh, the young people and get the young people to, to, to become the future, to become the elders of the future, the new elders, and that will be magic.